Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miss Azrael's Gaming. So today we're going to jump back into Tavern Talk, and I believe one of the last things that happened was Rhea and Kyle and uh, the elves whose name I cannot pronounce, uh, they were going on a journey to see what was going on with the stars falling. So let's go ahead and hop back into the game. We're at Act 2, Starlight Sonata. Six crossroads of three, a third of the astral moon. Oh, yeah, we also met the little uh, detective Melina, also known as Millie. Good morning. Good morning, Millie. Good morning, Blaze. Uh, we also changed his name, which is hilarious because she asked his name and he said it was Blaze. And I decided to go on with, along with it, and apparently he, he keeps it. What have you both been up to today? Oh, you know, dilly-dallying and such. I was not dilly-dallying. He was. He goes with, he, it goes well with the brooding. Sounds like a wonderful morning. Can I offer you both something in drink, uh, to drink in these early hours? Yes, please. Can you make me something smart and sparkly? Can do. That's a nebula, isn't it? Smart and sparkly. I believe that's the only intelligence drink is the nebula. Yep. Okay, so we'll put a little charisma in there. Uh, and I think just the... This one. A fresh brew of smart sparkles. Thank you. This is just the right amount of sparkle. Happy to hear that. Blaze, what can I get you? Nothing. All right. Oh, I see his, his uh, vampire wounds have healed. So has the cape found its way back home yet? Yes. The vampire was thankful, if melancholic. It seems to have awakened memories of old woe. He seemed pretty excited to me. He should be. It fits him well. Almost like it was made for him. It was very interesting seeing a vampire in person. His fangs were shorter than I thought they would be. I expected them to be the size of a colossal saber, saber tooth tiger's fangs, but they were much tinier. A common misconception. Where did you find him? The fallen Westgate. It was a tragic sight to behold. It was okay, just a bit crumbling. They can't rebuild it that quickly because giant wildfire ba uh, ba <laughs> badgers keep showing up at night. Apparently, they really like to eat stardust. Do you know a lot about giant wildfire badgers, Millie? I do now. Did you ask one for an interview? No, they're not very talkative. Oh god, there's a... Alethian, Alethia gave me a lesson. After you stalked her for an hour. I didn't stalk her, I was investigating. Miss Anwar, the vampire, or the Westgate. All of them. I've been hard at work the last few days trying to uncover the mystery of the fallen stars. I was already very excited to get a closer look at the Westgate. But when I saw a vampire traveling with a seasoned dwarf and a seraph cleric, I just knew I had struck gold. They were clearly investigating the area, just like me. Of course, I wasn't sure whether they would share their findings with me, or how deeply they might have been involved in the conspiracy themselves, so we opted to stay in the shadows. We watched them from the best hiding spots we could find them, listening in on their conversations. Unfortunately, they were mostly talking about the quality of different pickaxes. But that didn't stop us from staying vigilant. Us? Me and the mysterious and quiet Blaze. He's my new associate. I'm no such thing. It's great to see you two working together so closely. You make a great duo. We are not a duo. Thank you. So you weren't able to collect much evidence by eavesdropping? No, not this time. Then how did you end up getting zoology lessons? Ah, yes. So... My stealth may need some work. That's an understatement. She knocked over every stone we came across. It was a miracle that none of them noticed us. They must have been struggling with their perception this morning. Yeah, the giant wildfire badges, badgers sure weren't. Uh, she steered three of them our way. That sounds terrifying. It was. And? I mean, they were way taller than us and had piercing flaming eyes and sharp teeth, but it was fine. That's just how investigations go sometimes. Plus, Alethea was there. She saved us. Put herself between us and the monsters. They blasted her with their fire, but it didn't hurt her one bit. And without taking a single hit, she banished them into the primordial sea. 
That's where they came from. Did you know that? I do now. They also can smell about a hundred times better than us and know how to use chopsticks. She told us all that after yelling at us for almost getting killed. It was so cool. It does sound very cool. Did she share any of her investigation insights with you? No. She told us not to worry about it. But she did tell me to work on my stealth. Will you? Yes. Blaze offered to help me. Did he now? It was embarrassing to watch. I'm sure it was. Were you shaken up at all by the wildfire badgers? No. I've encountered countless horrifying creatures in my time. You cannot meet them with the fear of death still beating in your heart. Wait, so you've met monsters before? What kinds? Which ones are your favorites? Which are the first ones you ever saw? Did they try to eat you? Of course I encountered monsters before. They've been a, par they've been a part of my life for many years. The shadows are full of them. Really? That's scary. Of course it is. So the first monster you ever saw were shadow monsters? No, they were much worse than that. What is it? Can I have a drink after all? The words aren't flowing easily. Of course. Same as last time? Yes. Let's see if I can find something sweetly charismatic. Okay, well that should be the spoken heart. Okay, a little bit of defense. A little bit of strength. And charisma for the rest. A drink, just for you. Thanks. How is it? Fine. That means it's perfect. So, where was I? Alright. Shadow monsters. Back when I was younger, I had just joined the Shadow Banes and was eager to prove myself. It said there are great riches far in the depths of the Gravel Mac, a dangerous mountain range in eastern Ferocia. Hidden treasure troves full of precious gems and gold, and I owed some debts. Hoping to find some jewels, I'd made my way there to the darkest of its crevices. Guarding its depths were creatures no one would ever choose to face. Bleak stalkers straight from the twilight chasm. Hideous creatures that have every right to be associated with the nightmare realm. They typically feed on rocks and gemstones, but they seem to think bones have the same general consistency. I wasn't able to harm them with my mortal weapons, so I distracted them with some of the gems I had managed to pocket earlier. It was a close call. I'll never forget their twisted antlers and beak-like snouts. They kind of sound cute. They were not cute. If you say so, maybe one day I'll encounter some. Pray you never will. Okay, we still get the rumors unlocked. All nightmare, no shadow. Okay, no thanks. Okay, we got the achievement, The Beast. Welcome back, Care. Are you alright? Yeah, of course. You want a drink? Yes. Give me something strong, please. No watered down muck. Got it? Can I pause there for me? So maybe we go. No watered down muck. Okay, so strength would be the southern brawler. Okay, we got a little charisma. A little defense. And a whole lot of strength. Strong with zero water, just how you like it. Thanks. Need that. You're welcome. Say, Innkeep, you got room in your neat little book for a uh, full of recipes for one more drink. Sure, got one for me? You bet. It's a it's what my Baba used to drink back in the day. My adventure reminded me of it. Okay, so we unlocked the rep recipe. Sailor's Courage. Thank you, Kara. Why are you so sad? I ain't sad. But you look sad, and you sound sad, and the innkeeper looks worried. Probably because you're sad. I am worried. Don't be. Too late. Like I said, I ain't sad. Not really. More, I'm not sure. My chest feels tight, and I feel lightheaded. Maybe I'm dying. Those are all side effects of being sad. Who are you, anyway? I'm Millie, the world's greatest detective. Hmm. I'm Carlin. Who's that punk next to you? That's my sneaky assistant. He got a name? 
Malachite. Ah. So, I would like to detect why you're sad. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, he says his name is Malachite. Okay, so we've, we've got Zephyr, Blaze, and Malachite. This reminds me of somebody I know who keeps adding to his name. But why did Millie not go, that's not your name? <laughs> Like, I would think Millie would have questioned that. She wouldn't question when we called him Blaze. But she, you'd think she would question that. But whatever. <laughs> Likewise. Does it have to do with that wyvern chimera whose saliva you were hunting for? You met a chimera? A wyvern chimera, yeah. That's so cool. Why? How? You're alive? Sure am. Do you remember that forgetful vampire, Millie? Of course. He put out a quest for Chimera Saliva. He thinks it may be able to produce a sunscreen strong enough for him to walk in the daylight once more. Carlin was brave enough to pick up his quest. Whoa, that's amazing! How would you even get the saliva of a guardian? By killing it. Oh. Would you like to tell us what happened? Is it really necessary? I think it might be good for you. Hmm. And very interesting for us. You don't really want to disappoint Millie, do you? Miss Carlin, will you please tell me the story? Fine. Thank you. I didn't mean to kill it. Seems like an extraordinarily blasphemous thing to do. For someone non-religious, you concern yourself an awful lot with it. Just try not to be a dick, that's all. Usually I got no trouble killing beasts, but my baba would have lost it if I told her I harmed a guardian. I think so, at least. Not like she'd ever fought any of them. But she had the natural ability to know when it would have been right to do so. I ain't got that kind of sense. We'll see about that. How did the fight start? On my way there, I changed my mind from fighting to sneaking. I thought if I was quiet enough and had the veil of night on my side, I could just steal the saliva from right under its nose. Or maw. Drooled quite a bit, that thing. But I didn't know my way around the crag mangrove, and I wasn't as quiet as I should have been. Oh, I know all about that. But you got a giant sword, so you were prepared, right? Of course. Innkeep here even hooked me up with some fire resistance. Came in handy. And this sword, well, was made for killing beasts. Even the good kind, I suppose. Is it a magic sword? Not sure. Doesn't do any magic tricks. But it's stronger than your average steel and can resist even the highest heat even within, without practical potions. Used to belong to my grandma. She left it behind for me. That's so sweet. Your parents gonna leave you not anything? No. They weren't expecting to go, so they didn't think about that in time. But that's okay. I can find my own treasure. I'm sure you will, kiddo. So the Chimera noticed you? Yeah, Sly Beast pretended to be asleep while I approached it with the bucket. When I tried to catch its saliva, it snapped at me. Would have taken my arm off if I wasn't so tough. The ensuing fight was something else. Next to its dragon head, it sported a lion and snake head. They fought me all at once with overwhelming ferocity. It was the fiercest enemy I've ever encountered, and even though its fire couldn't harm me, it took everything in me to beat it. I may have defeated it in the end, but I felt honored to have fought such a formidable foe. So you defeated it with your badass sword? I did. This weapon really saved my skin. Dealing the final blow, I felt like my grandmother was holding my hand and guiding me towards victory. Or maybe I was just imagined it. Maybe. Maybe that doesn't matter, as long as it felt real. Maybe. I even gave it a proper burial. It deserved an honorable send-off. I almost left the sword with it too, but it's too good of a weapon. The dead don't need swords, anyway. Yeah. You know, I did achieve her dream. I saw a wyvern chimera in the flesh. I even fought it, and then I killed it. Does that mean I killed her dream? I think it means her sword saved you from dying. I'm sure that was a dream of hers, too. Possibly, but she would have found another way out of it, I'm sure. But she ain't here, so I thought maybe it was time I put her to rest as well. Left my goodbyes for her with the chimera. Maybe it can pass them on. May Tuat listen to your pleas. May he find that much mercy in his cold, dead heart. Is he dead, you think, Tuat? I mean, I mean, he does reside over the spirit realm, and only the dead can go up there, so he must have died to have gotten there, too. Always, always existed there. Was made to watch over the dead. He's a god, after all. There's no clear consensus on what the great spirit dragon really is. A dead dragon, a god who could always control death from uh, his very inception. A reflection of what we believe death to be. Death itself. He could be anything. What would you be like to him? What would you like him to be? What hopes do you have? I hope he's kind. I hope so too. 
then I think he's kind. Maybe we should follow his example. That's what heroes are for, right? Indeed. You're one of those, right, Kara? Of course she is, silly. I have to agree. You know what would be more heroic of her? What? If she brought the saliva to Kyle, the vampire, I'm sure his joy about finally being able to walk in the sun will be extraordinary. Too lazy to go yourself? My domain is merely my tavern. You're much more likely to run into him. Hmm. Fine. Might as well. Need to get moving anyway. You're leaving? No, just need to move around. Any of you happen to know where I can find this vampire? Last saw him at the West Gate. Being fireproof, you could have no you should have no issues out there. I know where he wanted to go. I overheard him talking about it. Care to share? Hmm. I want to trade it. The information I mean. For what? Can you teach me how to use a greatsword? That's it? Sure thing. Right now? Is right now okay? I've got the time. It might take you more than one lesson though. That's okay. I've also got time. It's a deal then. I'll show you the basics and tell you where to find the vampire. Yippee! That is, if your assistant is alright with that. Don't care. Not my circus, not my monkey. <laughs> God, I love him so much. <laughs> a grump. Okay, kiddo, let's go. And keep. can we use your front yard? Of course. Go wild. Will do. Are you coming too, Mal? No. I'll stay here and have another drink. Okay, you can join us later. Can't wait to learn how to fight. I'll, it'll be so helpful for future adventures. Innkeeper, do you have any quests I can do on after the, uh, can go on after this to practice my sword and stealth skills? Not yet, but I'm sure something will come in. Be patient. I promise I'll have a quest for you soon. I can't wait. I'm going to destroy any challenge with wits, stealthiness, and giant swords. Ha! I know you will. But first, I gotta practice. See you later. I like her ambition. I like her naivete. Some would call it optimism. A waste of time. Delusions get you nowhere. You would know. Another drink, please. Same as before. Sweet and all. Coming right up. Okay, so our newest one was Sailor's Courage. Ooh, dang, man, that's a lot of strength in that one. Dang, okay. We need this one. Okay, little defense. Little strength. A whole lot of charisma. Some sweet optimism for my most pessimistic customer. Hmm. This is sweet enough to make me optimistic for future drinks. Wow. I'm proud of myself here. You should be. So, Malachite? Just leave me to my pondering. Got it. I didn't even drink that fast. I just, I, he didn't want to leave my presence. Seems like he's still there. It's nighttime and he's still with me. Hi, and keep. We haven't seen Fable in forever. Hi, Fable. I'm so happy to see the tavern looking healthy again. And you too. I'm sorry it took me so long to check in. <laughs> That's all right. I hope the last two days weren't too hard on you. No, no, not at all. I was just very busy. A bunch of the Ashen Grove's trees got knocked over, and I spent a lot of time rescuing and leading group therapy sessions with the local wildlife. And, of course, I had to check in on all the nearby settlements, too. See if they needed help with any damage after all of that. Of that. Did Uncle Dragon make it? Yes, the werewolf settlement took a bit of a hit, but everyone made it out okay. Mr. Dragon was making emergency soup when I arrived. I think he's a stress cooker. It's very nice of you to check in with everyone. I had to make sure everyone was okay. I used up a lot of my healing salves, but that's what they're for. I'm not happy I had to use them, but I'm glad I was prepared. May I request something? Go ahead. Do you maybe have a drink in your repertoire that could assist someone in a situation like mine? Your drinks are powerful. I'd like something that would make me tougher while also replenishing my social energy. I think I'm done with helping out now, but a drink like that would be a real game changer in case something like this happens again. Hmm. I don't think I have a recipe for that yet, but don't worry. I've already got an idea. Okay, so we unlocked Thousand Winds recipe, 
But even without such a drink, I'm sure people were very thankful for your presence. Well, they weren't mad about it, at least. Though, I sort of feel like people aren't really as concerned as I thought they'd be. When I saw the stars fall, I thought for sure the world was going to end. Yes, I recall. You were right that it wouldn't, of course. But I thought that people would be a little more freaked out by the lack of night sky. But everyone just seems to be okay with it. I asked one of my sisters about it, and she said, Who cares? Some wide-eyed adventure will surely put them back at some point. Let's worry about replanting these tomatoes. I don't even know if you could put them back. You can never put back what's lost. But you can always replace it with something new. I'm not sure that you can replace the stars, or if you should approach lost that way. It's all a matter of perspective. I wouldn't mind a bunch of trees up in the night sky for a change. Right. But it still would be much nicer if some things would just stay the same. They never do. I'm just happy everyone is okay. Did you check on Car yet? She should be hacking my ter she should be hacking my terrace to pieces outside. I did, outside. On your definitely not hacked up terrace. Just out of curiosity, do you own any wood glue? It was nice to see that she's okay too. I was a little worried she would just leave and never talk to me again. So it was nice watching her train Melly with so much enthusiasm, and to catch up a bit, that too. She tried to rope me into her, their greatsword training. Did you accept? I'm not really a sword kind of elf, but it was fun to watch her teach Melly. She's very sweet. Indeed. And I was just relieved to see Carolyn doing all right. And she was relieved about Mr. Dragon. And about you, I'm sure. Maybe. To celebrate our well-being despite the absurdity of this world, how about a drink? I would love a drink. Can I have something agile and swift? I still have to make my way back home later, and I could use some speed for that. I'm sure I'll find just the right thing. I feel like I'm making a lot of drinks today. Okay, that would be... Swift Strike. That's what Fable always gets. Okay, Defense. Some Intelligence. And a whole lot of dexterity. Swiftly and quickly, your favorite drink. Thank you. Your drinks are still the highlight of my day. She makes the best drinks, right? They're okay. Really? Do you actually think that? Or is this a thing where you just want to be nice? People seem to do that a lot for some reason. Or don't want to be nice. I, um... They taste good. As good as things can taste when you're, um, me. Well said. Thank you. By the way, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Fable. I'm, I'm an elf and a ranger, and I come here a lot. They are, they are also an incredibly courageous and capable hero. That's not true. Not yet. I'm working on it. Being a hero, I mean. Why? Because I dream of adventure and all the wonderfully exciting things it can bring, and I want to help people. Why? Why not? A Malachite. Oh, you're Mal. I mean, Malachite, obviously. Millie just talked about a Mal. She said they, or I guess you, are very cool and her new friend. She sounded very happy about it. We're not friends. She just won't leave me alone. Oh, okay. Then why do you spend time with her if you don't like her? That sounds really mean. She keeps following me. And you take her along? Not by choice. Hmm. I don't know you well enough to judge the truth behind all this. But I think you should be honest with her and with yourself. Honesty goes a long way. I also believe that thing in Zoford could be fixed with honesty as well. You mean the missing familiar? I heard several familiars are missing, actually. And I believe with so many mages and familiars present, someone is bound to know something. But maybe they're just too scared to face possible consequences for their honesty. Okay, so we got Mage Mania. We might actually be able to do this quest now. It sounds like Zofor is going through an eventful time. Thank you for letting me know. I'll keep an eye or two out for future developments. Zofrid isn't far from here, is it? Not too far. It's in Easter Feos and is, to my knowledge, the biggest harbor town the Republic has to offer. I can only recommend its many summer festivals. Very pretty fireworks. Why, does it sound like something up your alley? No, not mine, but... 
Melina is seeking, for her, seeking her first quest. Maybe this could be something for her. She needs to practice her skills outside of risk-free theory. Good idea. I'll see if I can reserve it for her. Sorry for asking, but first quest? I thought Melly just turned 10. Isn't it a bit young for quest? No, I was a similar age when I ventured on my first quest. The one with the horrifying nightmare creatures. Yes. Oh, that's sad. No, that's cool. No, I think it's a little sad. Children shouldn't have to face such danger that early. <laughs> Why not? It's always there. Might as well confront them with it when they're young, so they can accept its existence in their lives. That's an insane thing to say. Just because the world can be horrible doesn't mean we should confront children with the fact as early as we can. It's already bad enough that us grown-ups have to deal with so much. Why should they just accept it, if we can make the world a better place for them instead? I mean, when you were on a quest with, I quote, horrifying nightmare creatures, weren't you scared? Wouldn't you have preferred not to be alone? It builds character. A character that thinks we should put other kids in miserable situations? Sure did a lot of good for you there. Weren't your parents worried to death about you? You got enough rumors to make a quest yet, Innkeeper? Not yet. Give me another day. Okay, so we don't. People are so busy talking about or ignoring all that star debris, they're losing sight of the important things. Like feeding me new information. Is that very nutritious for you? No, but it's fun. In that case, the fun it can provide in a day is running out. Unfortunately, the horrors of this world do not stop chasing me nor anyone else. I shall take my leave. Good luck. See you around. With less horrors, I hope. And you scared off my boo. Now I'm worried. About Malachite or Melly? Both. Are you really going to send her on that quest? If she wants to go. But I don't think you have to worry about it that much. Zofred is a beautiful city with a very low crime rate. I think she can handle a cup of rowdy familiars. And I doubt she's going to, uh, to be alone. I hope not. There's a little worse than being... There's a little worse than being alone when you're scared. Very true. Are you scared of anything? Hmm. Bad Yelp reviews? I don't think you have to be scared of that. You make the best drinks in all of Asteria. I think as long as you like my drinks, I'll be okay. You've got my five stars in the bag. I would ask what you're afraid of, but... The answer would be everything. Is it? Yes. But I'm working on not letting my fear stop me. I might not be able to avoid feeling afraid, but I can always do things when scared. Rather than not at all. Maybe that is a, still a terrifying thought. How do you handle situations you're afraid of? Hmm. I used to have a her terrible habit of just walking away from the things that scared me, but with the right people by your side, staying becomes less of a crushing weight on your shoulders. You realize that even if things aren't perfectly comfortable, they're still worth experiencing. That sounds lovely. I've never seen friends of yours around the tavern before. Maybe you should invite them over sometime. Perhaps. Though one of my friends is still sitting there right now. Where? Wait, are they invisible? Oh, you mean me. That's... That makes me really happy. Almost makes me feel pretty bad about having to go back home. <laughs> Don't worry. Go home. Fix the many things that worry you. As long as you come back. Always. I'll see you tomorrow, innkeeper. See you tomorrow, my friend. It's kind of sad that Fable didn't consider them friends, seeing as they come there, like, all the time. Oh, it's raining again. Okay, so Act 2, Starlight Sonata, 8 New Horizons, 4th of the Astral Moon. We got a new person. Good mythical morning. They look like an elf. It's well past noon. It's still morning somewhere. Plus, a wizard doesn't care about things like that. Time's not only re uh, relative, but also flexible. Like a gummy worm. One time, I've actually tried breaking through the space-time continuum using a loophole through the primordial vortex. And, did it work? No. But almost. I would have needed a drip of primordial seed to enhance the cult, uh, curative, and that should have done it. But, no access to the primordial sea. Bummer. I heard that's not very easy to get. Theopractically, it is. Theopractically? Practically in theory, duh. Ah, 
That makes sense. Hey, man, don't sass me. I make the drinks around here. You do? No, actually, of course. You know what? I, I have a feeling they're smart, Alex, so I'm just going to say yes, I do. Of course I do. Hmm, interesting. And suspicious. Are you mayhaps also a person of magic? Well, I do make magical drinks. Enchanted mixology? That indeed is a niche. Say, innkeeper, did something you make ever explode? Occasionally. Heck yeah. Welcome to the club. I think I blow something up at least once or twice a week. I'm Hex, by the way. Nice to meet you, Hex. Nice to meet you, too. Just innkeeper for now. All right. Well, then, innkeeper, how about a super wheezy, breezy drink for me? Any flavors you might fancy? Maybe something, hmm. Something that'll make me focus more and perhaps help me to better understand the primordial vortex. Gotcha. The hell kind of drink is that? Okay, something with intelligence. We only have one drink that does that, right? Yeah, the sparkling nebula is, even though this does have it, we need this one. Okay, so charisma to two. And all the rest of it is intelligence. And we don't make the sparkling nebula very often. This should boost your focus like nothing else. Amazing. I can already feel the ideas cooking up. I think I figured out a way to get that primordial seawater, too. Never mind. The explanation would be too complex to grasp, so... So? What complex reason brings you to my tavern, Hex? Eh, getting away from the other smartest person in Asteria. And who would that be? Does it matter? You tell me. My sister. She's studying and driving me crazy with all her theories. They're so reasonable, you know? No chaos, but there has to be a bit of chaos in everything, doesn't there? I wonder how she gets through life with so much structure. Oh, it's a skeleton man. Structure is the key to everything, young lad. Without structure, there is no cause, chaos, and thus, there'd be no entropy. I found entropy to be quite essential in this world. And you are? Oh, how rude of me. Top of the morning to you, lad, and to you, innkeeper, is it? Correct. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm, uh, I suppose you can call me Scully. My actual living name would be too ancient to be spoken out loud. I'm an archivist. At least I used to be. Now I'm dead. Somewhat. Not completely, obviously. Under mysterious circumstances, I happen to be still cure conscious. So you're undead. Precisely. How? Well, I passed on, and then one day I rose from my grave. It was like a long sleep, completely knackered for thousands of years. At least I believed it's been thousands of years. What year is it? 1755? That's a brutally long. So how did you come back to life? I'm not sure, too sure myself. I woke up and walked on like nothing had happened. I thought to myself, I might as well explore the world anew. Those who'd risen with me didn't seem to be inhabited by an independent consciousness. And alas, didn't care. Those who'd risen with you? Oh, he's with the undead. We're going to probably get that quest done. There are more like you out there? Of course. Undead rarely rise alone. They mostly serve a master. Right. Yep. Got Scully's information. Let's see. Okay, we have Hex, a uh, half-elf. Okay, 48, he, him, wizard, zenith, chaotic, neutral, and tower. And we have Skelly, skeleton, age unknown, he, him, archivist, everbloom archives, chaotic, neutral, the magician. So Skelly is a Maeda and the personification of a gentleman, and he's well dead. Or at least he was dead for quite some time before he rose again, but contrary to his fellow undead, he returned conscious. However, I decided not to bother with that and go my own way. Going south, I passed through Zofort and found a small little tavern. A bit like this one, more nautical in style. They had a lot of fish. I've never been a fan of seafood. Though, I got to listen to a lot of town's gossip. Care to fill me in on that Zofort gossip? Well, apparently a well-known noble married a commoner and decided to run off with her, leaving the family without an heir. But there's more. Fishermen fear that Zofort has been cursed by a sea witch. They say the docks are being haunted by lonely animals that stare blankly at the waves and the moon all night. And during the day, they disappear like ghosts. Bit of a weird curse. Fitting for any sea witch or wild sailor, sailor's tale. There we go. That's probably the last one we needed. 
innkeeper say, do you have a drink for this undead fella? A drink and a mop? Just a drink. I won't be needing a mop. If you say so, what would you like? Something that'll loosen up this non-existent tongue. Something full of car uh, ch charm, charm and appeal. Coming right up. That would probably be a uh, spoken heart. Okay, so some defense, some strength, and all the rest is charisma. A real charmer just for you. Jolly, I feel like I conquer I can conquer words worlds with my words alone. Oh. Not that I would ever do that. I care more about words than worlds. Archivist things, you know. I spent most of my life reading, sorting, and archiving. That didn't leave a lot of time for dreams or hubris. Are you sure? Academic hubris is a powerful one. Come on now, that type hardly counts. Agreed. It's only natural. Oh, I think you've given me an idea, Bone Man. I did? Yes. If I can enhance the aging process of cells, the incubation procedure could... All right, I gotta go. If my sister asks if you've seen me, no, you didn't. Thanks, bye. Hmm. Energetic young fellow. Indeed. Okay, so we got character information on Hex. Let's check that out real quick. Okay. So Hex is a very impulsive wizard who loves chaos and everything unreasonable. He is one of the two smartest people in the world of Hysteria, with the other being his sister, who seems to be his competitive op or his complete opposite. Thanks to him, I also learned a new word, uh, theopracticality. It means practically in theory. If you don't mind, Innkeeper, I'd like to linger here a bit and enjoy the moment. Of course. Fable's back. Hey, Innkeep. How's it going? All fine and dandy. How about you, Fable? I'm still very busy helping the farmers rebuild their barns and fences. Also, apparently a bunch have lost their crops due to how hot the stars were. It's terrible. Seeing all this destruction is terrible. I've never seen anything like this before either. Historically, the Lady of the Gilded Sea never struck me as someone to unleash baneful omens. Uh, apologies, my manners. It's impolite to burst into a conversation just like that. I'm Scully. Fable. Nice to meet you, Fable. Again, my apologies for the impulsivity. That's all right. I was just surprised you could actually talk. Oh, uh, no offense. I, I just thought, um, usually, none taken. Usually skeletons don't speak. Theopractically, they don't. Theopractically? Practically in theory. Exceptions confirm the rule. You sound like a wizard. Please don't say that. Okay, let's pretend I didn't. Scully, how did you like her drinks? Surely an experience. I can feel it gurgling in my bones. Sometimes they do that. Could you also make me a drinking keeper? I don't want my bones to jingle, a jingle, but something that enhances my finesse would be nice. You know, you have to be very delicate with zucchini seeds, or they'll give up immediately. Of course, coming right up. Okay, so we need dexterity. Swift strike. Why don't you just ask for a swift strike? That's what you get every time. I think I'd know it at this point, but... This tastes refined enough. This is perfect. You know just what I need, Innkeeper. Of course I do, after all, you're regular. Of course I do, after all, you're my favorite regular. I mean, do I want to... Do I want to say my favorite? I feel like I... F the other, like... Zephyr who comes in, he's technically my favorite. I'm just gonna say regular. Sorry, Fable. I don't know what I'd do without your tavern. Plant zucchini? Probably. So, do you think your farm work will be done soon? Oh, I hope so. Not that I don't like helping them out. I do, but I think the sooner everyone can get back to normal life, the better. Do you perhaps need a hand? I happen to have two. I might have a thing or two. I might know a thing or two about crops and fences. Sure. I could use some help carrying a few things over to, uh, 
Targaryen. <laughs> my treehouse is just around the corner. My brain just froze up. Splendid. Sounds like quite a useful endeavor. I'll gladly indulge. Thank you. Inky, before we go, I have something I wanted to give you. What do you have for me, Fable? Some dried honey flowers. The farmers didn't know how to thank me, so they gave me some of these flowers. And you're always so helpful and nice, so I wanted to share them with you. I'm sure you already have at least four ideas on how to use them. Thank you very much, Fable. I'll make sure to put them to good use. So you accept donations for ingredients? Certainly. I can only get my hands on so many infusions myself. What about recipes themselves? It's always good to get more inspiration. Wonderful. In my prior life, I had access to a lot of books about magic and potion making. I think I still recall my assistant's favorite recipe. Okay, so we unlock the recipe first snow. Do you store it under your hat? Of course. Where else would I keep it? Fair enough. Thank you for the recipe. Innkeeper, thanks for being such a patient and pleasant host. I should be on my way then with Fable. But I'll be back. Should I not crumble into a pile of bones from one day to the next? Let's hope not. I won't. I'm just joking around. I... I hope I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. Anyways, Innkeeper, thank you so much. See you around. Let's go, Scully. No time to lose. It's Kyle. He looks... Is he dressed different? Like, I feel like his vest is different. Then I was able to witness such rarity in my lifetime immaculate. You would even get incited about rusty nail. Of course I would. Such a splendid chemical process. Metals are a variety of chemical processes. Rust being my least favorite of them. Ruins lots of hard work. Does it now? Yep. Makes everything porous. Oh. Kyle, Rhea, nice to see you both again. Likewise, dear innkeeper. How has your day been? Can't complain. Had some interesting customers today. Ah, like that one distinguished gentleman who crossed our, us on our way in disgusting or distinguished yeah gentlemen don't know a giant top hat doesn't make you a gentleman i said disgusting that's so funny what makes you a gentleman manners he was quite polite i recall greeting me with the tip of his hat you find everyone polite even your slime but mr slime is quite polite and keep say that dagger over there i feel like it's strangely familiar for some reason it reminds me of my dear evelyn it looks like the knife she used to peel oranges with Highly impractical, I tell you. I imagine it would be. Do you know if that is her dagger by any chance? I think that might be a story for another time. Let's not worry about it now, shall we? Okay. Say, Inkeep, have you read that letter yet? That'd be a story I'd love to hear right now. Not yet, no. Tragic. I've always loved writing letters. Inkeep, you got a drink for me. Something that'll make me tougher. So I can get through today's babbling. Of course. Okay, defensive drink would be the Frosted Lagoon. Okay, a little Charisma. A little Strength. And a whole lot of defense. Now that's what I'm talking about. A gift of great dragons. Well, thank you. I give it my best can taste that. I feel sturdier already. I've had me doubts about ye, Inkeep, but I must say, you know your job. So, how has the day been for you two? The usual. Splendid. It was my first day in centuries out under the rays of the sun. And how did you like it? It's brighter than I thought. The sun, light of the sun, I mean. Ray and I took a, a day trip to the capital, since I rarely get to see it full of daily life. There were so many people. Too many. Just the right amount for a city. It was so vivid. It almost made me feel alive. And everyone was able to admire my beautiful cape. Is that the cape? The cape of invisibility? It absolutely is. How curious. Does that mean you two are going to Beruvia now? Huh? Why would we want to go there? That was the deal. I help you get your cape. So you can attend that fancy Beruvian vampire banquet and I get me gold's worth. Oh, but I got that invitation about 500 years ago. Didn't I mention that? <laughs> She's gonna kill him. No. What about me material, then? Well, I can give you the gold right now if you want. Can you accompany me a while longer, though? Uh, fine. Oh, wonderful. Every second I spend with you brings me tremendous joy. What a great day to be a vampire. 
I've got my cape back and I can walk under the sun like mortals do. Say, innkeeper, what if you thought, what if you thought of a new drink? One that would taste just as incredible as the gentle and welcoming beams of sunlight fill on your skin. That's kind of a vague description, but I think I might have something in mind already. Ah, oh, wonderful. So we unlocked the recipe, Peak Sunrise. I wonder if my dear Evelyn would desire to walk in the sunlight as well. Do you know what she's doing? Do you think I could pay her a visit? Mm, you shouldn't. I should. The air smells like reconciliation. Didn't the rogue tell you what happened? You mean the young Echo? Well, he said he had retrieved my cape. I'm sorry, Kyle. Pardon me, but what exactly do you mean? Countess Evelyn didn't want to give up the cape without a fight. She didn't make it. Oh, <laughs> say it ain't so, Inkeep. Unfortunately, it is. My dear Evelyn, gone. From all vampires to... For all vampires to walk Gaia, I had always assumed she'd walk the longest. I suppose death catches up with everyone eventually. Did she put up a good fight, at least? The best I've heard in a while. Oh. That's how I remember her. I hope Tuat holds her soul dearly. You have souls. Of course we do. Ah. I wish we could have at least danced one more time before or wrote her final line. But alas, fate is cruel, especially to those who aim to live forever. A fate we rarely choose ourselves. Oh, how shall I ever recover from this? Maybe a drink can help you for now. Oh, would you do that? A drink for me? Of course. Okay, so we got more information about Kyle. Okay, so the curse of being a vampire is outliving pretty much anyone you'll ever meet. So it's not surprising that Kyle seems to fight with abandonment issues. He seems uh, few people die of old age, after all. Nonetheless, he is still very attentive to others, perhaps to cherish the time he has left with them. Something strong, please, dear innkeeper, so that my heart may stop aching soon. Oh, poor Kyle. Okay, so probably a southern brawler. Okay, so we need some charisma, some defense, and then all strength. I can't mend your broken heart, but perhaps this helps. It does. Thank you, dear innkeeper. Why don't you tell the innkeeper more about your day, hmm? Right. I suppose I wasn't done yet. Where was I? Your trip to the capital. Busy streets, bustling with people. Roots. Roots? Roots? We admire the roots that enclose the city, almost like a rampart. I finally had the chance to take a closer look. Quite fascinating. For once, gotta agree. Almost made me believe the myths are true. Myths? Myths. I told you, rumor has it, there are uh, these are the roots of the ether tree, breaking through the surface and taking hold of Gaia, where they guard the capital. Ah, so we unlocked the rumor roots of ether. Ah yes, a very good defense plan indeed. What is wood going to do to protect a city? A city is protected with stone. Oh, I was never very involved in fortification efforts. I figured. Oh. Oh? We've also met the lovely Seraph again. How are her investigations coming along? Very well. She seems eager and determined. A detective spirit. Believe the last made her way to Dalwell. She seems to be on to something. I can't wait to hear the story when she returns. Likewise. St. Rhea, can we go to town and check out the antique stiller? Oi, why? I want to see if I can find any keepsakes from the old times. Very well, then. But you won't munch on the shopkeep, will you? Of course not. I'm well sated from the innkeeper's creation. All right, then, let's go. Goodbye, innkeep. Enjoy your shopping spree. Oh, new. Ooh, I like your dog. Well, meta adventure. do my eyes deceive me? Minith in the flesh. Hello, darling innkeeper. It's good to see you again. It certainly has been a while. Must be hitting that 15th year mark, right? It'll be 25 years soon, actually. Ah, you know how I am when it comes to keeping track of time spans longer than a decade. I'm well aware. Good that you have me drop in from time to time to remind you, hmm? I couldn't be more grateful. Especially when you bring Casket and Kane along. Oh, I see the other one under her arm. <laughs> Do cute service bees still get a discount here? Always. So what's brought you back to the area? It's not your usual haunt. 
No, I generally prefer something more... Moist? <laughs> Not the word I'd have used. But something akin to that. It's decidedly too arid around these parts for my taste. And here I thought I would get to at least enjoy the uh, recent downpour, but no. The stuff that came pouring down was unique. That's one way to put it. Destructive is another, and possibly more accurate. But I'm glad to see that your tavern hasn't suffered the same fate as many of the streets and buildings I saw on my way here. Immediately, the journey was already quite challenging to navigate with my wheelchair before. Though the scenery was always has always been worth the struggle. But now, I'm afraid it wasn't possible to, make, to take in much enjoyment from the passing landscape. Not when I had to pay so much attention to not endanger myself and my sweet service beast. You've told me of the struggles with traveling before. I'm sorry to hear that recent events have been made worse. Oh well, we're here now, aren't we? And I do have to say, using the primordial vortex as a way to skip your uh, veranda stairs is a marvelous accessible ability touch. Quite the impressive work, my friend. I'm glad to hear that my little spells are doing their job. I hope the cities will put similar care into rebuilding the city rebuilding the area. Flat or cobblestones would do wonders for people like me. But believe it or not, I didn't come all this way to talk about the development, inclusivity, and urban infrastructure. No, really? Mm-hmm. Shocking, right? I'm here on a hunt, one could say. What do you have your eyes on? Protection pearls. I've heard a few hushed whispers in my library. Folks say the pearls appear in the Lonesome Lagoon this time of year. Ah, those again. Good hunting, then. Thank you. Though, while the pearls might be my main objective, I haven't decided to come to town with only a singular purpose. I need to ask you for something, Keeper. A good drink? No. My manuscript, darling. I believe 25 years should have been enough time to proofread it, yes? Ah, of course. I finished devouring the manuscript almost as soon as you gave it to me. It just took me a while to recall doing so, you see. Since it's been so long since I definitely got done with that. Lovely. I'm glad I have such a reliable old friend to proofread my work. Would you like a drink while I t try to engage my brain cells or remember where I put it? If you're offering, I'd be pleased to accept. Perhaps something to refresh my mind after my journey. I'll do my best. For snow... I was going to say, we have the sparkling nebula, but it looks like this peak sunrise would work as well. But let's go with this one. very hard about making the perfect drink for you. Ah, I've missed this. Good to see your mixing skills haven't diminished one bit. In fact, I think I might be coming up with an idea for a new story. Let me note this down really quick. Take your time. So, while I enjoy your mixology, no matter what you put in front of me, I'd enjoy it even more if you could recall the location of my very precious manuscript. You know, the one I lovingly worked away at for almost half a century whilst my library came to be? Certainly. It should be just below this pile no, wait, I must have put it over there, actually. Alright, given this ongoing battle with your organizational habits, it might take you a bit longer to recover it. And I have some pearls to go get. How about this? I'll return in around seven days, and then I can tell you all about my pearl hunt in exchange for my manuscript. My proofread manuscript. That would be helpful. Good. It was nice seeing your weary face again, Innkeeper. Likewise, Minneth. I have a safe and pearlful journey. Huh. I'll try. Seven days should be enough to read a manuscript, right? <laughs> okay, so she, I haven't read it. That's that's not a good thing. Okay, so... Um, oh, it would be... The Familiars, possibly? Okay, so a scandal in Zulford. The lively port city of Zulford is known not only for its docks, but also for its large community of mages. Lately, there seems to be something mysterious going on. The familiars of several archmages have gone missing and nowhere to be found. But it's a big city. There must be someone who knows something. Could their disappearance be related to the tale of the sea witch who cursed Zulford's dock? Innkeeper. So we got another quest on our board. I think there's still... 
Is there still one up on our board? I don't remember. Or maybe they've all been solved and this is the latest one. Okay, Act 2, Starlight Sonata. Uh, 9, Crossing the Threshold, 5th of the Astral Moon. All right, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I hope you've been enjoying Tavern Talk. Uh, it's definitely a nice, relaxing game. Uh, I'm looking forward to see if uh, our character can finish proof uh, reading Myth's uh, manuscript that apparently we've had for, what did she say, 25 years? Was it 25? I think it was 25. Uh, we've had it for a really long time and apparently never proofread it. So, you know, we've, we've got seven days to get that done, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we can we can do it, depending on how big it is. But leave me a comment down below, leave me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye.